Well, mountain pine beetle is really the most destructive species for insect species that periodically go epidemic and kill literally millions of millions of trees. This is very new for Alberta. So it's of great concern in terms of the impact it's had on, our, on these forests. As it's moving further east, we don't know how the forests in this area will respond. We don't know what's going to regenerate. So it's important to study mountain pine beetle and lodgepole pine since it is one of its preferred species and it's, a, it's one of the major tree species in terms of harvesting in Alberta. The main challenge is to understand if and how these trees will regenerate after the stands have been attacked by mountain pine beetle and whether we'll have productive forests on these sites in the future. So the central research question is what conditions would facilitate natural regeneration of lodgepole pine in forests after mountain pine beetle? So to answer this question, we did a widespread survey of post-mountain pine beetle lodgepole pine forests throughout west central Alberta. We looked at a variety of different forest ecosite types from poor sites to rich sites, drier sites to moister sites, so across the range that lodgepole pine grows on. We looked at them intensively to see whether there was natural regeneration of lodgepole pine or not. The factors that we found that were really detrimental for regeneration was largely competing vegetation. So in areas where there was a lot of competing vegetation, there was almost no or actually no natural regeneration of lodgepole pine. On the poorer sites, the cones seem to be opening at lower temperatures relative to the richer sites. The cones are more likely to open at lower temperatures and there's a greater chance of the seed being released onto the ground and there's a greater chance of pine regenerating on those sites. The levels of uh, pine regeneration, natural pine regeneration that we saw were not sufficient to completely restock these forests. So if forest managers want to see some sort of regeneration, it seems like management intervention is required. At these pine sites, we tested a variety of different site preparation treatments just to see which one might be most effective to get lodgepole pine to regenerate. Partially harvesting a site is one way to go. It definitely opens up the canopy a lot more so that cones are potentially able to open. And then also in sites that have more vegetation, doing different site preparation treatments is a good way to go since it kind of clears the area, provides the microsites and give pine a chance to regenerate. Another option for management of these stands is salvage logging. We know that this treatment will work for regenerating these forests. The issue is that not all these stands can be salvage logged because there's too many that have been attacked by mountain pine beetle and there's not a sufficient capacity to, to salvage log all of them. I would prioritize the richer and moister sites for treatment after mountain pine beetle. In terms of the management of the sites, they need to decide how urgent it is for these sites to be regenerated. If there's a great urgency for them to be regenerated, they probably need to salvage log them or partially harvest and site prep in some way to facilitate that more rapid regeneration. And then if there's other sites that have a good amount of advanced regen, then we could be more patient with those and uh, let them go and see how they develop over time. Residual trees are the trees remaining alive in post-mountain pine beetle stands. Residual trees are in different categories, right? Some of the trees were attacked by mountain pine beetle multiple times. They were really, really defensive. But the percentage of such trees is about 2-3% or 5% in some stands. In other cases, some of the trees that escape from mountain pine beetle altogether, they were never attacked by beetles. Those are the second category. Third category is the trees that uh, attack and they, are, uh, they were resistant at the beginning, but they gave up later on and attacked by other uh, pathogenic and uh, secondary insects. All residual trees, they all had a larger resin dox. Composition of the resin is sticky and toxic chemicals. That's their job is stop the beetle uh, attack. If the resin responses are strong, the pioneering female beetles, they are killed before even they release the pheromone. We found the resin oxides were not affected by the mountain pine outbreak. So we suspect the resin oxides may be under genetic control. We don't know yet though, whether their offspring carry on the similar uh, resin dog characteristics. If they do, I'm really hopeful that they can be highly resistant to the mountain pine beetle attacks in the future. We recommend forest managers to leave the residual trees in post-mountain pine beetle stands. The forest managers can identify the residual trees in post-mountain pine beetle stands simply based on if they have a green, healthy 
look 